James Jimmy Lewis rolled over in bed, squinting at the cracked, tarnished mirror hanging crookedly on the wall of his spacious room in the boarding house. The reflection that greeted him was one he barely recognized, a weary face with an enormous fresh bruise blooming on his right cheek, a remnant of another night spent drowning his sorrows in alcohol. He was no longer the soldier he once was. Hard living had left him old, scrawny, and hollow-eyed. Today, the worry lines etched into his forehead felt deeper. Swinging his legs over the edge of the bed, he planted his feet on the cold wooden floor. Pulling on his dirty gray tracksuit and sneakers, he trudged down the old mansion's winding staircase and into the communal kitchen. The boarding house was eerily quiet, the other residents likely still tucked away in their rooms. He barely noticed Miss Pringle in the dining room as he passed, too focused on his craving for coffee. Morning, Jimmy. Her voice, syrupy sweet yet tinged with an unsettling edge, sliced through the silence. Startled, he turned to her, revealing the uninjured side of his face. Good morning, he muttered, forcing a smile as he rubbed his side. The dining room was dimly lit, sunlight filtering through dusty stained glass windows like an old church. Miss Pringle, a 70-year-old widow, sat in there, looming over a large wooden table, knitting. Her huge, dark figure was slightly hunched and shrouded in layers of black fabric that seemed to cling to her like shadows. You look like you've seen a ghost, she cackled. They say this old place has a spirit. Some claim it protects us, while others say it has a darker side. Yeah, he asked, feigning interest. What do you mean? He turned his back to her, pouring himself a lukewarm cup of black coffee. Oh. Stories. People disappearing. Strange noises at night. It's always been mysterious. Her voice dripped with an ill-defined threat that made the hairs on his neck stand up. He leaned against the countertop as the microwave beeped, feeling the dull ache in his limbs becoming impossible to ignore. I'll keep that in mind, he replied though he could hardly mask his discomfort around her. Just be careful, Jimmy. Not everyone here is friendly. Miss Pringle crooned creepily from the other room. Sure, he grimaced, stealing a glance at the two aluminum casserole dishes in the oven. The tantalizing smell of bacon, fried potatoes, and something sweet wafted from the stove. What are you cooking? Hash browns with bacon, biscuits, and stewed apples. I'll scramble some eggs when the others get up. You're up too early. It won't all be ready for another 30 minutes. I'll make a fresh pot of coffee. Folks will be coming down soon. Sounds delicious, he replied, feeling the familiar tug of hunger. My favorite childhood dishes. My grandma used to cook this exact breakfast. Miss Pringle snickered, a sound that sent shivers down his spine. I aim to please. There was something about Miss Pringle, the way her gaze lingered too long the strange smiles that never quite reached her eyes, that set him on edge. The persistent ache in his limbs now overshadowed by his growing repulsion for her presence. He collected his warmed coffee and strode into the dining area to join her. Oh! She gasped dramatically, her eyes widening as she noticed the bruise on his cheek. What happened to your handsome face? Jimmy shrugged, dismissing her concern. Just a little accident, nothing to worry about. Then out of the blue, I used to be a tax collector. What did you do in your previous life, James? Miss Pringle adjusted her huge, awkward spectacles onto the bridge of her wide nose with a long, bony index finger, her tone now businesslike. As he took a reflective sip of his coffee, he felt her gaze lingering, her expression a mix of curiosity and something darker. It made his skin crawl. I was a soldier. I got injured. Real bad. But then I pulled through. I came back home. And the rest is history, as they say. I retired a few years ago. Is that so? Well, you should be careful, Jimmy. A man like you shouldn't get hurt, she said, her tone both sweet and insidious. That night's sleep eluded him. The shadows in his room seemed to shift and twist, the air thick with unease. Just as he began to drift off, he was jolted awake by a sudden chill that swept through the room, as if an icy wind had blown in, even though the window was closed. He sat up, rubbing his eyes and squinting into the darkness. That's when he saw her. 
Miss Pringle stood in the corner of his room, her figure illuminated by the faint light of the street lamp outside. Her face was eerily calm, with a smile that stretched too wide, revealing teeth that seemed sharp. Jimmy, she whispered, her voice soft and conspiratorial. I've come to check on you. What the hell are you doing in here? He snapped, instinctively moving to put some distance between them. Shh, you don't want to wake the others, she replied, stepping closer, her smile growing unsettlingly. I just want to help you. You've been so troubled. Get out, he shouted, the words escaping before he could stop them. She tilted her head, her expression unchanging. You don't understand, do you? The air felt electric, and he could feel the weight of her gaze pressing down on him. I don't need your help. Just leave me alone. She moved closer, her hand reaching out as if to touch him. With a surge of adrenaline, Jimmy lunged for his bedside table, grabbing the heavy lamp. Get away from me! Her eyes flashed with surprise, but she didn't back down. I'm only here to help you. You're insane, he yelled, swinging the lamp as she advanced. The bulb shattered, sending shards flying, but it didn't phase her. Instead, she laughed, a chilling sound that echoed in the large room. Suddenly, the light flickered out, plunging them into darkness. Panic surged through him as he scrambled backward, heart racing. He felt the edge of the bed press against his legs and tried to collect himself. Jimmy, she groaned, her voice now a seductive whisper. You're special to me. Get out, he yelled again, desperation fueling his voice. Then, in a sudden movement, she lunged, her fingers brushing against his cheek where the bruise was. You see? I can help you understand the darkness around you. He jerked away, feeling the sting of her touch. What are you talking about? These bruises, your pain. It's becoming a part of you, she said her eyes gleaming with an unsettling light. You have to embrace the darkness, Jimmy. Dizzy, the room spinning, he realized he had to escape. With a burst of courage, he shoved past her and rushed to the door, flinging it open and sprinting down the stairs and out into the cold night air. He could hear her laughter trailing behind him, echoing off the walls of the boarding house. Days turned into weeks as he wandered the empty streets, haunted by what had happened in his room. Eventually, he mustered the courage to return, determined to confront her. But when he arrived, the place was deserted. He pushed through the door, heart pounding, calling out, Miss Pringle, are you here? Anybody? No response. Just an unsettling silence that echoed back. Hello? He called again, dread creeping in. The dining room was empty, the kitchen cold. A sense of foreboding settled in his chest. As he turned to leave, he caught sight of a note pinned to the wall, scrawled in an unsteady hand. You were never meant to escape, Jimmy. The scene shifted. He's coming around, nurse. Thank goodness, he's been unconscious for weeks. Give him 50 cc's of morphine. I'll call the attending physician. Can you hear me, Private Lewis? A fog was lifting from Jimmy's mind. He was never in a boarding house. He was still a soldier. Young and vibrant, his platoon had been hit by enemy fire. A bomb had detonated. He had been guarding the detainment camp's gates. All had gone black. He rapidly blinked against the harsh light of reality, grappling with a haunting realization. He had narrowly escaped the grip of death. 